We know that saving your hard-earned cash is important, but investing your cash can go a lot further. Cam met with the CEO of the leading provider of cutting-edge trading algorithms for experienced traders and newcomers to learn more about how to approach investing. Jeff Seconder, welcome to Inside South Florida. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Excited to have you and get to learn so many new things today. You ready for this? Yes. All right, let's, let's dive it. right in. Let's dive right in. Let's so we're talking about increasing your income today. What are four ways that you can do that? Yeah, so I'd, I'd say the first thing, and maybe I'm a little bit biased, is uh, my, my company, we took successful trading strategies and built them into software so that the everyday investor can actually run them in their own account. And historically, they've done a pretty good job outperforming things like just a buy and hold, like stock market portfolio. Uh, so that would be the first thing. If, if someone has like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands to invest, I think that's the best vehicle. That's what myself and a lot of my family members and 3,000 of our clients do. Uh, the second thing I would say is remote sales. So there's a lot of businesses that are primarily online. And specifically, you know, our company is fully remote. We've got 85 people working for us now and we've got a pretty decent sized sales team, but they make a fair amount of money anywhere between, you know, on the bottom end, $5,000 a month. We've got a rep that makes consistently over $100,000 a month and they can sell from anywhere that they want. So, and there's a lot of companies uh, that you can find those types of opportunities It's not just my company. So that would be a, uh, a really great opportunity for people that maybe want to work remote. And then the second thing I would, or the third thing I'd say is UGC content. So like user generated content, we're specifically looking for people that can speak well, understand our brand, understand what we do, and we pay them either sometimes full-time or sometimes even part-time per video. Like if they have their own brand online on social media, we'll pay them for certain posts that they make. Or if we have certain ads and, and marketing campaigns, uh, we'll pay them for like hourly to, to produce content for us. So that's another huge thing that's very trendy. And then uh, the fourth thing I would say is uh, digital courses and like consulting programs. Like if, if anyone's ever overcome a problem themselves, they can then teach other people to, to overcome that problem as well. So that's actually how I launched one of my first successful brands was overcoming my credit problems and then turning that into a business that helped people repair their credit and fund businesses and, and be able to start an entrepreneurship. And speaking of entrepreneurship, I mean, congratulations first and foremost on everything you've done so far. Thank you. But in the rise of gig economy and all this entrepreneurial activity, what are some tips for those who are thinking of starting their own side hustle? Yeah, I would say, you know, you don't have to come up with a crazy idea. You know, you don't have to be the next Facebook or like go build this crazy app that's going to have this like huge impact and a billion people are going to use it. Like focus on making it more simple don't get into something that has a lot of overhead. Like I'm not a huge fan of people diving into, into businesses that, you know, they have to have a, a physical location, they have to buy a bunch of machinery, they gotta take out a ton of loans in order to even start the business. Um, I like things that are more lean and the margins are higher and they're quick and easy to start. And that's specifically kind of why I mentioned those four things I just mentioned. Everything I just talked about is exactly what I'm, I'm speaking about. Uh, they're high margin businesses, uh, they're easy to start and uh, you can do them you know, pretty much from anywhere in the world. It makes it a lot more sustainable. Yeah. It makes it easier to sustain. Yeah, sure. and, and it reduces the risk that you have because when you're just starting out in entrepreneurship, you're gonna make a ton of mistakes. Well, and speaking, of, speaking of those risks and mistakes too, what are some common pitfalls that people yeah. might face? How can you avoid these? And then how can you overcome should you fall? Yeah, I would say uh, doing things that are just too complicated and also a lot of people try to start things that they don't really know much about. So the thing is, is like you gotta, you gotta become a master at what you're gonna start a business in. You've gotta care about it and you've gotta love it and it's gotta be able to scale and provide impact to others. And at those three intersections, that's where you're likely to have success. So the main thing is like trying not to start something that's too complex and you've really gotta know what you're doing when, before you get into that business or it's likely to, to not do very well. But you, you gotta realize perseverance is a necessity in entrepreneurship. You're gonna fail, you've gotta be able to overcome it. And you speak from a very personal experience yourself. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned it off air before, both you and your mom. Give us a little bit of an inspirational example <laughs> of overcoming these struggles and then building income off of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I started my first credit uh, and funding company which came from my struggles with credit. So I had a 524 credit score. I was working in the corporate world for the largest bank inside the United States and I had terrible credit problems. And uh, I, I couldn't get a nice apartment, couldn't get a car, 
couldn't start a business, couldn't do all these things. So I figured out exactly how the credit system worked in the US. And then I repaired my own credit. I started a marketing company, uh, funded that, uh, that company tens of thousands of dollars at a 0% interest rate, and then was able to scale that into uh, you know, uh, over an eight figure brand. And that was something that I did. I started in 2019. And uh, that company progressed and grew very quickly. And then I would say another thing is, is uh, you know, my mom, she used to sell insurance uh, for multiple different companies. I had her move down to from Ohio to Florida, and she now runs our software, uh, our trading software. She deposited $60,000, has made $40,000 in profit in the last year. And now she's actually on my sales team. So she's doing sales for me. And uh, she was actually leading the, the, uh, the appointment setting team last month. She did over $400,000 in sales, uh, which led the team on the appointment setting side. So um, pretty cool how like, you got to be open to change. You've got to understand that there's new, there's new technology and uh, things are rapidly changing in business and you've got to be able to adapt um, and, and then persevere whenever there's issues. But yeah, I'd say those two are the, the top two examples I'd give. Most definitely. Inspirational story, and we love a good mother-son duo in business. Of course, <laughs> of course. Well, tell us, where can we go for more information? Yeah, I would say if you want to learn more about trading and, and the softwares and things that we use to help investors diversify, um, you can go to nurp.com, which is N-U-R-P.com. And then my brand online, I share a lot about what I do, uh, share a lot of different uh, content that can help people in multiple different areas, but specifically around entrepreneurship and mindset and, and, and finance. And that's at uh, Jeff Seconder. So, you know, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitter, all those things. Mm -hmm.